in retrograde. I'm in retrograde. Hello, my lovelies, and hello, my darlings on Facebook. We had a little technical glitch. I was on the wrong Facebook feed. Good to be here with you. Was sick last week, little stomach flu. Glad to be back here with you. All right, so what are we talking about this week? What we're talking about this week is actually what we were supposed to talk about last week, as well as what we're going to be talking about now what we were supposed to talk about last week and what we were supposed to talk about this week. We're mushing it all together because um, somehow the promotion of what I was talking about also got a little womp. Yeah, I think that Mercury retrograde was really kind of wonky and it affected many, many things. Who knows? Anyway, so today's topic, I'm talking about what you need to do to be careful when you're shopping for um, upholstery and what you need to be to do when you are shopping for case goods for wood furniture. So here's the thing to know. Let's talk about upholstery first. Here's the bugaboo when it comes to upholstery. That $4,000 sofa costs as much to ship as the $1,000 sofa does. Well, you could say, oh, how much could that cost? More than you think. Think about a full-size sofa. You're going to get dinged. A manufacturer, freight carrier gets dinged on uh, the cubic feet as well as the weight, these things weigh about 175 pounds. You got all the wood, all the nails, all the springs, the, the foam, the whole nine yards. It's a big complicated thing to manufacture and takes weeks to manufacture. Then just shipping it, freighting it, putting it into a crate so it can make its journey, getting it up to a, a receiver, a store, having it uh, inspected, rewrapped, and then brought to your door. It's about the same amount of cost Many, many, many hundreds of dollars on a $1,000 sofa, same thing on a $4,000 sofa. So wait a minute, think about it. Your cost of goods, how much quality is in that $1,000 sofa if some of that cost is also the freight? So in reality, you're getting less and less and less than you think you're getting on the lower cost item then you even realize because that shipping cost is in there. Well, Donnie, you might say, I'm, you know, I'm not even paying for delivery. Yeah, you are. Who do you think is paying for delivery? You are. It's wrapped up into your price. A retailer can show a $1 delivery on your uh, charge slip, but it's built into the actual price of your product. So I'm telling you this, that on upholstery, you are covering things in fabric. You can hide a lot of really bad manufacturing quality, really bad manufacturing processes. You can hide really low quality product, um, good product um, good, uh, base componentry. It can look good and look like it's going to sit comfortably, but will it look good in four weeks? Will it look good in four months? Will it look good in four years? Let's face it. You spend money on a sofa and you get your living room done or your whatever room done. You don't want to have to go back and repurchase something. You already because it's you know junking out on quality, you're already on to the next thing that you're saving for, your vacation, or you wanna do a deck off the back of your house, or whatever. So I'm gonna tell you something I know you've heard before, but now hopefully you know why. Try to buy the best you can afford, even if it means you're buying a little bit less in terms of not finishing the room now, or doing something in phases. You will never ever, as I teach my students, you'll never find something for less you will find something less for less. There is a big difference. I've met with a potential client a couple of weeks ago and I sat down in her kitchen. She had just had a terrible experience with a design designer that really, really screwed her and she, things were a mess. And so she started to have to just buy some furnishings on her own. She needed furniture in her home. And I sat down on a, an upholstered chair in her kitchen and I said, ooh, the problem with his chair, you know, uh, is this one of, is this an old chair? Or is this something that designer, you know, provided? She said, no, 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 we, we just bought that from a, a catalog or very well-known internet catalog resource. And I said, oh, and I felt a little embarrassed that I said something. And she said, they're not really that comfortable, are they? I said, well, I, I think there's a little bit of an issue here. I mean, it felt just like the cushion completely compressed when you sat on it. And I looked at the other cushions around the table on these upholstered chairs and they were all looking wonky and not so great. And there was a beautiful banquette seat, but it was all ripply at the back and it was less than a few months old. She said, you know, I'm really aggravated about the quality here and I, I spent $200 a chair. I said, well, $200 is a lot of money. It's not a lot of money for an upholstered dining chair. 
she had she put them together herself and so she had six of these chairs but meanwhile they were garbage and she was going to have to replace them in you know, a year or so with, with hard family wear. So what do you do if you're on a budget and you're looking at upholstery? You say, look, Don, I can't spend a thousand dollars right now on, on an upholstered chair or $800, or I can't spend 3,500 or $4,500 on a sofa. What do I do? I want you to make sure that you trust and know the real, the retailer that you're working with so that you know who you're calling when there's a problem. I want you to Google that retailer in your town to make sure that their customer service is where you need it to be. And just because it's a national retailer doesn't mean a hill of beans because some national retailers are actual in for furniture are actually franchises. So the way the XYZ national brand store operates in you know Akron, Ohio might be different than the way it operates in Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania versus you know San Diego, California. If they're under different ownership, you don't know how that store is being run. Furniture is expensive to manufacture, it is expensive to ship, it is expensive to deliver. So if you as a consumer are buying at the lowest end on the price point scale, because that's what budget requires, I get it, but do it with your eyes wide open. Make sure you know who you are doing business with, who you call if there's a problem, what your recourses are, what kind of met guarantees are there. And I'm going to tell you right now, there are virtually no guarantees on furniture. No one will guarantee fabric because they feel it's an end use issue and very few people at the at the entry level end <coughs> pardon me will guarantee any sort of frame the top top end price point wise when you're spending 5 6 7000 dollars on a sofa those manufacturers they'll say okay well some of them will give you a lifetime warranty on the frame for the original owner uh, the lifetime of the original owner owning this piece but even they will not um, won't back the fabric that, that just is considered an end use issue so make sure knowing you're going to own it for a while make sure you feel very comfortable with quality that you're purchasing and where you're putting it and that you trust the retailer that you're dealing with whether it's online catalog or in person so what about case goods what about wood furniture and if you have a question about um shopping for furniture please type it in. I'm happy to answer you. Oh, you know what? We got off to such a weird start. And since I had to wipe out my whole little hello and how you doing for my Facebook yummies, guys, quick announcement. The information is out and it's live. Go to the events page at the Interior Design Advocate website because we are doing the first ever Interior Design Advocate Design Diva live conference. Yes, we are. It's happening at a gorgeous luxury hotel in Philadelphia, September 28 and 29. Not going to tell you too much more about it. There's a little bit on that save the date on the event page, but definitely get your name on the invite list so you'll be sure to be one of the first people to know about it because when we do publicize it, we're going to be releasing a select number of tickets at an insanely low price. So yeah, I know you'll want to be one of the first people to hear about it. I'm getting a lot of hearts there. So that's good. All right. So anyway, back to our lesson. So what about, we talked about what a pain in the rear end it is. I'm getting smileys and happies. So we talked about what a pain in the neck furniture shopping is when you're talking about upholstery. What about case goods or wood furniture? Different animal, different problems. So think about it with a sofa. I could put the crappiest wood inside that sofa barely use any nails, use some spit and glue to hold it together, use the lowest quality foam. You won't know because I've wrapped it up in fabric. Wood furniture is a little different. Nothing to really hide there, right? You can see the wood table. You can see that wood chest of drawers. <coughs> so here are some things for you to know on wood furniture. The lower the price point, you're out of things that are stained. You're now looking at things that are painted. But Donna, you say it looks brown. It looks like it's a some sort of stained wood. Mm, it's probably just spray painted brown, right? It's not stained where stain is absorbed into that wood. Now, even the better manufacturers are using veneers, which is a thin overlay of wood, but the lower the cost of the piece, the thinner the veneer, the more likely to chip. Shipping is still a pain in the neck for wood furniture. Think about the sideboard in your dining room. That thing is heavy and it's bulky. Again, on shipment alone, the cubic feet, the weight, um, there's a lot going on there. So that those babies have to be well wrapped so that when they're getting jostled around in, sh in freight, 
They're not chipping. The corners aren't damaging. You would be amazed, but about a third of what delivers today, we have to have repaired both on the upholstery side as well as on the case goods side. So what do I want you to think about when you're purchasing um, furnishings in the wood area? Well, first of all, in the lower cost range, you're going to be looking at painted versus staining, you'll, or you'll be looking at very thin veneers. Okay, no problem. Be careful about how those drawers open and close. The inside and back of those drawers may be made more of a particle board. Um, certainly, if you're looking at what's called juvie furniture, furniture, juvenile furniture, definitely lower cost manufacturing um, qualities used there because of price point. Parents don't want to spend a ton on their teenagers' furniture. <coughs> Sorry, I still have this upper respiratory thing hanging on. They don't want to spend a ton on their nursery furniture. So definitely on kids' furniture, be real careful about the quality. But what I'll tell you is that the lower the cost of the item, the likelihood that the manufacturing process uh, processes are there. Um, you're not going to have easy glide drawers or maybe really well-dried well dried wood. Not maybe, you won't. Wood has to be dried down so it doesn't warp. Um, so it's nice and stable. Six months, eight months to dry it down well. Well, and the lower cost product points, price points, all that drying down is not happening, which is why you might find three years after buying a low cost dining room set or dining room sideboard, suddenly the drawers aren't, the drawer fronts are looking a little warped or the cabinet doors aren't swinging shut the right way because things have continued to dry down and settle in the heat of your home and the dryness of your home. So here's what I'm going to tell you. And I, I see that we have um, some questions coming in, but here's what I'm going to tell you. Look, we all have to live to budget. Budget is just the fact of life. I don't care if you're a Rockefeller. I don't care if you're a trust fund baby. Everybody has, or not, everybody has a budget, right? So what I want to tell you is that if you are purchasing furniture at the lowest price points, try to align your expectation, like I said, with what you're, what you're buying. But also think about trying to put better quality pieces in higher use areas. For, so for example, in your bedroom, the master bedroom, See if you can get a better set of drawers, you know, in that chest of drawers that you're getting. And maybe in your teenager's room, that's where you're going to go a little downstairs on price point and quality or in the guest room or in your home office. You know, the bench seat that you're adding under a window that's barely going to get, you know, sat upon. Yeah, go into the lower price points knowing, yeah, this thing may get a little warpy and wonky looking over time, a little ripply over the top, but it's, it's not a high use piece. Same thing if you have one of those look but don't touch living rooms. Okay, so put a lower cost, you know, a couple of armchairs in there. If you think you're going to be using the sofa a lot, though, <coughs> I'd still try to get a little bit more quality into that sofa. So it's sort of this constant juggling act. A kitchen chair that you sit in a lot, maybe you don't want to do upholstered chairs if you have to go at the lowest price point. Or at least go sit in them someplace. Don't order them online. Go someplace where you can sit in it and see how sturdy it is and how tough that cushion seems to be. Um, because the lower the price point, I don't care how much you love a manufacturer or love a retailer, the lower the price point, they simply cannot use the same quality of materials or manufacturing process as you see in the higher price points. You know, $4,000 sofa is just not built the same way as a $1,000 sofa. Never could be, never would be. There you go. Sorry to say. All righty. So um, some questions are coming in or are questions coming in? Or if you have a question, pop it in. Getting some hellos from people. Um, what about outside furniture is a question that's coming in on Instagram. Uh, that's from Anita. So Anita, I'd love to know what you mean about what about outside furniture, but I'll give you what I know until you <coughs> send in a follow-up. So with outside furniture, this is something that needs to live in the elements. If possible, you definitely want indoor outdoor um, fabric on outdoor furniture. Why? If you think about just plain cotton cloth that's in your home, maybe on some drapes right now, that cloth was woven and then it was dyed. Woven and then it was dyed. The color was put on top of, of that fiber, right? The, the fiber is what was woven together. But with indoor outdoor fabric, the color is actually mixed into this man-made fiber that is then extruded like out of a pasta maker. So the color is intrinsically part of the actual fiber. Therefore, it cannot be bleached out by the sun. 
Cotton fabrics, on the other hand, they, they will lose, they can lose their color in, in sunlight, in that UV light. Also very important, cotton is an organic fabric and mold and mildew loves to grow on something that's organic like cotton. So if you are hosting a dinner party with your family or just having, you know, hot, this Friday night hot dogs with your fam on the deck or your patio and somebody drops something on one of those, um, you know, upholstered chairs, <coughs> if it is an organic material, very easy for that goop to stay in there and start to fester. Whereas if it is um, a man-made indoor outdoor, you wipe that off, nothing's gonna wanna grow on that wiped, you know, on whatever residue is left behind because it's a man-made fabric or fiber or, or, um, or our host. And mold and mildew needs something nice and organic to really get going. So definitely indoor outdoor fabrics, that's the good news. Bad news is indoor outdoor fabrics are about 30 to 40% more than cheap, you know, nylons or cheap cottons. Um, the good news about indoor outdoor fabrics, they have changed dramatically. They have a much softer hand. They don't feel like, you know, sandpaper. So that's something that uh, is, I think, to the benefit of consumers today. And then in terms of what the other material is that's, that, that let's say your, your chairs are made of, you know, a really durable powder coated aluminum, great move. Be careful of woods unless you plan to seal them. Um, you want a really solid, heavy something like a teak. Teak doesn't mind water, um, but a softer wood, be careful about it. And then some of the interesting woven looking product is really not made out of wicker. It's made out of the same type of um, man-made um, like polymers that um, some, you know, airline materials, air, airplane materials are made out of. Some of them are just the like, toughest tanks. They get more costly, but again, you get what you pay for. So hopefully that helps you, Anita. And if you have a more specific question, I'm happy to take that. And Katie's passing me more questions in Facebook. You're being out questioned right now by Instagram, but if you have any questions, feel free to type them in and I'm happy to answer them. So, um, so P PC file is asking me, who do I recommend for a good sectional sofa? I'm going to throw it back to you. How much are you spending? Are you spending $15,000 on that sectional sofa? Or did you want to spend $3,500 on that sectional sofa? It's all about price point. Can't recommend anything in terms of a retailer or an online resource. If I don't know your budget, how big is this sectional sofa? I've seen big fat giant babies, um, and they're huge, and, and from a really good manufacturer, they'll be in that 15, 18, 12, uh, easy price point. Um, so what I would say to you is, by the best you can afford, do some Googling in your area, and literally, if, if you're shopping at store ABC, I want you to say, how, you know, reviews, online reviews about ABC's sectional sofas and online reviews about so-and-so's outdoor sofas, whatever it is you're purchasing, online reviews about so-and-so's kitchen chairs. See what people are saying about that manufacturer. I just had one of my students um, post something about four months ago in one of our Facebook groups, private Facebook groups for one of my courses, and she said she was really disappointed because a manufacturer whose wood furniture she really liked, she went on and bought one of their sofas and hated it, hated the quality. So just because a manufacturer does one thing well, doesn't mean that they do the other thing so well. So definitely do your Google research. Um, and again, I don't know your price point, so hard for me to recommend um, for you. Okay, Lori is asking, shouldn't anyone buying an upholstered piece of furniture online be concerned about how comfortable it is? Um, I try to avoid this kind of supplier because you can't test it out first. You know, Lori, that's a really interesting point. I'm gonna tell you something. I know sometimes people wonder, you know, how do those, how does it work with, you know, people are hiring designers? What's it like to do all that? I'm going to tell you that clients who are hiring luxury firms like mine, they often don't get to sit in everything. Very often they don't. Because think about it, a showroom only has so much square footage. Showroom in New York, showroom in, in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, or in Dallas, or wherever. There's a limit to how much floor space they have. So a showroom might have a few pieces of upholstery from a manufacturer, but not every single piece of upholstery because a manufacturer could have hundreds of different items or SKUs as they're called, SKUs. So it's possible that you will sit in the manufacturer as, as a client, 
but not in the actual piece that you're going to be purchasing. So you can at least see what is the quality like. So to answer you, Lori, more specifically, if you are someone that wants to sit in your furniture before you purchase it, yeah, I wouldn't be doing any shopping online. I would make sure I went places where I could sit in it. Here's the thing with furniture, with um, upholstered goods. <coughs> I'm sorry, I still have this weird dry cough. It's, it's about the support you have when you sit. All you and I are to a sofa is load. Sorry, it's not very glamorous, but that's what we are. And a sofa that's well-built is looking to disperse the load, disperse our weight through it, because people tend to sit in sofas in the same way, in the same, same place over and over. Think about where you sit every night after dinner when you're watching TV with your hubs. Everybody tends to sit in their same spot, right? So that's where a wear spot can happen. But it's not just about the resilience of that cushion. Do you have springs on the inside of that cushion with a nice wrap of foam or nice wrap of, of down? It'll cost you if you do. Or do you have just have a really good high-density foam? That'll cost you more than a low-density cheap foam. They're all going to give you more resilience. But it's not just then what the seat is doing, Lori. It's also how your back is pitched. It also has to do with how deep the sofa is. Um, one of the things I like about Kravit, not in an inexpensive upholstery group at all, but the way they pitch their sofas somehow we find that a woman who is five foot four can sit as comfortably in them as her hubs who's 5'11 or 6'1. So weird, weird what thing that they do. I think Vanguard can do some really um, good work that way too. Not in all their frames. Everything doesn't pitch well for everybody, but in many of their frames. And I would say that for both of these manufacturers. So it's about the pitch. And it's about the depth. Different sofas come in different depths. Some are, you know, a shallow depth which might be what you like. Some are a deeper depth, like a 41 inch versus a 39 inch. So I'd go out and do some shopping, Lori, and I'd sit in some things and I'd try to get a sense of, gee, do I like a tight back sofa or do I like a loose cushion back sofa? Do I like a deep sofa? And if you sit in something that you like, get out your measuring tape and ask the salesperson, say, listen, how deep is this sofa? I found this one more comfortable than that one. You know, what's the depth difference? Katie's throwing so many pieces of paper over to me. I'm gonna start panicking soon. Katie got in really late from, an, from a girl's weekend, so she just wants to get the heck out of here. She's throwing papers at me. Anyway, Lori, I hope that helps you. Um, and if not, you know, throw in another question. I'm getting more hellos and highs from people. Hello. If people think things are eye-opening, I'm so glad. Um, okay, I've got a question now from D. Menken. Okay. <laughs> Who says... <coughs> I bought a sofa 15 years ago that is in excellent condition. I don't build them like that anymore at all price points. What do you think it would cost to reupholster? It will cost probably to, to replace that sofa if it's really a good frame and in good, good condition and you like the shape of that frame. I would absolutely reupholster it in a heartbeat as opposed to replacing it. Um, top end manufacturers are always, always lower cost. Mm -mm. It's usually lower cost to reupholster than it is to purchase new. And why do I say usually? Because if you lose your marbles and go bananas on the fabric and you decide, oh, I'm going to put, you know, a really fine velvet mohair for $280 a yard on this sofa that needs 25 or 24 yards. Hello, goodbye to the budget. So it's about controlling yourself on that fabric, right? Fabrics can be anywhere from 35 up to 350 on average. So if you can stay in the lower price points, that 65 and under price point for your fabric, I think you should be able to do something probably for maybe about $3,000, $2,500, depending upon the, I don't know what city you're in, depending upon the labor costs, it's, it's a big labor game. I do the math, most sofas, about 22 yards of fabric in a solid, so you do the math. Think about what you want your per yard cost to be and then where your labor, how much room you have for labor and find out who does good reupholstery and also ask the question, do you need to rebuild my cushions? Are they kind of flopping and becoming awful? So hopefully that helps you there. If you're just joining us, sorry, Facebook, we had a little false start with you. So I didn't, I don't have posted the information about da, 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 the Design Diva Conference. Oh, but Katie's I added it. adding it. So. I already added it. I'm just a talking head. <laughs> I don't know what thing threw up the other night. Just bad. Still can't eat right. Just bad. All right, there you go. All righty. So 
I have nothing to say on that. I have nothing to say about the phenomenal Design Diva Conference other than I hope you'll be there with me. All righty, so um, Allison is saying, are all down blend cushions made the same? I'm gonna say no. Um, it's, it's all about price point. It's how much fill are they using? And um, I, as I understand it, there are different types of down feathers. Some have more loft, some have more density. So I would, again, Allison, I would do some Googling complaints about the down cushions of so-and-so. Let me just tell you this with down cushions. Um, people either love them or hate them. They're a wonderful cushy, cushy sit. They can look really mushed up really fast. So Allison, I hope you are a cushion flipper. If you want to keep your down cushions looking tailored and fresh and yummy, you're going to be flipping those cushions every now and again. Um, I tell people minimum for sofas and upholstered goods, flip your cushions a minimum of twice a year. You know, give yourself a holiday, maybe Mother's Day and Thanksgiving or Christmas and Easter or whatever. So give yourself two times a year. But if you are a little bit of a nut, like I am, um, and I like my, my, my cushions to look really very, very tailored and crisp. I, I'm a pretty frequent flipper. You know, I would, every other month maybe, you know, or as soon as I see something's not looking, I'm, a, I'm doing the little flip to do All right, final two questions. Um, here we go. Here's one of them. I have a three-piece sectional that I need to reupholster. Yeah, that's going to be pricey because that's a lot to reupholster. Think about it. A three-piece sectional. That's got to be at least a sofa, what would be equal to a sofa, a chair, maybe a chaise, or a sofa and two chairs. That's a lot of reupholstering. Um, I can't afford to do it all. Should I reupholster the big piece first? No. No, Zoe D. Don't do it. You know why? First of all, it's going to look strange. But next, so let's say you have these three pieces um, on Zoe's sofa. And let's say, all told, Zoe needs, I don't know, 40 yards of fabric to do it all. I'm making this up. I'm not an upholsterer, but let's just say normal soap is about 20 yards. And let's say between the rest of this three piece thing, another 20 yards. If you only do one piece and you order, let's say 15 yards of the total 40 that you need, and you think, oh, I'll order the next round when I can, when I can afford it. Well, number one, fabrics discontinue faster than you can even imagine. Welcome to the new economy. So you, or if it's still available, Zoe, when you when Zoe wants it, the dye lot could be quite different. What's a dye lot? Well, cloth is woven and then it gets dyed, right? And <coughs> depending upon the humidity in the air and the heat that's that's happening, even though these are controlled environments, the humidity does vary in in a factory, and that will affect how cloth takes a color. And here at the design studio, I don't have a quick something I can grab, but I get something called a CFA, um, cutting for approval. When I've approved a fabric for one of my clients and then we go to order it, the manufacturer will then send me a CFA, a cutting of that fabric for my approval. So I can look at it and say, I can compare my sample and, and the new dye lot. And if I don't like that dye lot, I go, nope, X, not send me another, go to another dye lot. I wanna see a better match to what I, what I ordered. Um, you can see as much as a 15, 18% differential in dye lots. Ugh. And, and there have been times, not all the time, and maybe, well, how often do you think we do that? Maybe 12, 15% of the time we look at a dye lot and go, Ugh, what happened? But sometimes 20%, maybe 20%. Yeah. Um, and, you know, manufacturers change, um, distributors and all kinds of things happen. So I would not do it, Zoe. I would just start a fund. And if you can't stand the way your sectional is looking for now, uh, just use your mind's eye until you can get the funds together to do it right. And maybe you can go downstairs a little bit on the price point on that fabric. Try to find something good in that $35, you know, a yard area, and maybe that'll help you a little bit. All righty. So I don't have better news for you. Furniture is a pain in the rear end. It is pricey to make. It is pricey to reupholster. It's pricey to rebuild. Um, and it's pricey to ship. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm here to give you some love and support. I'm sorry some of my news isn't better. All right, last question, if we have one. Um, I don't think we do. I think we are questionless. Mm -hmm. Okay, peeps, we did it. So sorry about that weird false start for you, Facebook and Instagram. You had to live through the whole thing and watch me do, go into a flop sweat. I apologize. Uh, it was great being here with you. Next week, we're going to be talking about small bedroom design ideas. So if you are at all pressed, no, wrong. 
not bedroom, kitchen, right? Bedroom. Bedroom, yeah. Small bedroom. See, I'm just a talking head. Small bedroom design ideas next week. Small bedroom of design ideas. So bring your questions, your problems, you're tired, you're poor. Definitely give us a follow on Instagram if you're not already there. Girlfriend, what are you missing? At decorating.genius to follow us on IG at decorating.genius. And please go to the website to the events page. Katie, I believe, has um, posted a link on Facebook for you IGers. Go to theinteriordesignadvocate.com, click on the events page, and then sign up to get on the invitation list for our first Design Diva live conference at a gorgeous luxury hotel in Philadelphia. My peeps were asking for it, so we are doing it this September, the 28th and 29th. So there you go. All right, loves, I will see you next week. Thanks so much. It was so good to be here with you. I missed you. And We'll see you next week for, hey, wait a minute. We're going to be at market. Am I going to be, what time do we land? Am I going to be back in time? Oh, I don't know. Well, yeah. I may be able to do it from the airport like I did a live. We'll keep you posted. If there's, a, if there's a schedule change, I will let you know. There you go. All right, enough of this tomfoolery. I'm out of here. Love to you guys. See you later. Bye-bye.